Welcome to this node breakdown for Mardini 2024 with Grayscale Gorilla. This is day 22, and today's node is the Hair Generation SOP. So in Houdini, we can go ahead and drop a geometry node and go to the SOP level. Inside here, we can go ahead and drop a hair gen. So hair generate. Now I'm sure that you can tell from the name what this node is used for, but this actually serves two purposes. One is to create guide hairs, and then secondly, we create our final hairs based on those guides. So that's why we have so many inputs over here. I can go ahead and drop a sphere. And with the sphere, let's switch it to a polygon and increase the frequency to something like eight. Plug this into the first input. That's just going to be your rest skin or points. And what you'll see is that it just creates all these curves on the surface. And these are just curves. These are curves with certain attributes applied to them, such as width, ID, skin perm, skin perm UV. Now, usually we wouldn't want them all so uniformly scattered. So the first thing you might want to do is to override the density. As you can see, if we increase the density, we end up with more hair. We decrease it, we have less. But we can use a skin attribute over here. And there where it says density attribute, click on the paintbrush. And this will allow us to paint an attribute on. However, by default, it actually adds a value of one to the entire geometry. So this would put hair everywhere. So over here on the add density, just set this to zero. And on the paint density, we can now paint a patch of hair. So let's just go ahead and paint like this. And then into the hair gen, you'll see that we only have hair in that area. Now, these are going to be what are known as unguided hairs because these are guides themselves. By default, if we go down all the way to the bottom, you'll see unguided hairs. And so these over here are going to be unguided hairs. We can increase the length over here if we'd like, and we can actually use an override as well. So we can use the same skin attribute if we'd like. For example, we can just put density in here, and then it'll be shorter towards the edges. You can see over there, that it gets shorter. And this is quite useful for blending in two different hair systems because you can have them fade into each other quite nicely. So we'll decrease that length a little bit and that's what we're going to be working with for now. So these are just guides. Now to get this to the point where it looks like actual hair, we're going to have to use a couple of other tools. The most useful are going to be our process tools. So you can see we have the guide process over here. There's a preset for bend, frizz, lift, smooth, straighten, set direction, set length. The guide process default node, this one over here, takes the first input, which are your guides, and the second input, which is the skin geometry. And from here, it'll just add a direction. So this is like a wind pushing in a direction. That's simply because it has this operation over here of set direction, but we can change this. It can just be something else like wave, and you'll see that it adds a little bit of waviness to each hair. We can add some frizz, and you can adjust things like the frequency. So the hair is a bit more imperfect. And you can add more than one operation to this. For example, if you add another operation down here, this one might be the wave, and let's just decrease that amplitude, something like that. All right, so I'm going to just remove that second one. We'll just keep frizz for now. So the guide process is just useful for all sorts of these operations. But if we want more control, there's an extremely useful node which has loads of nodes of settings, which is the guide groom. If we just go over here and drop a guide groom, this is a really useful node to use. We plug these two inputs in, and now we have all sorts of options. The default is to just draw a hair onto our geometry like this, which isn't going to be the most used setting. We have a bunch of other options under the tool over here. You can see we have all of these options. For example, a useful one is to plant and you can middle mouse wheel to increase the size of your brush. And then you can actually just draw on new hairs. Additionally, we also have brush. Brush is going to be useful for shaping hair. And as you can see, it actually conforms to the surface. That's because our shape that we initially set, this one over here, is coming through as the second output over here. And it uses it as a collider to ensure that the guide grooms don't go under the surface. So as you can see, you end up with interesting results if you use the guide groom. The next one that we're going to look at is the hair clump node. If we drop this over here and plug these two in, you'll see that it clumps it into these little collections over here. We can choose how much we want it to blend with the original, and we can also define the clumping size. Now, this may not seem like it's all that useful, but what it actually generates for us is this clump ID, which can then be used for our final generation of hair, and it will generate hairs that all follow this clumping shape. So let's go ahead and use our hair gen over here again. And this time we're going to be using the guides. So you can see first input is actually the rest skin. So we're going to take second output into first input. And then we have the guides. So over here, we're going to take the guides and put that into second input. And you'll see that it doesn't really do anything for us just yet. As we mentioned before, we have this option for unguided hairs. This time we're using guides. So we're going to switch off grow unguided. And this is what we have over here. We're going to go over to the density and push it up. And as we push this up, you'll start to see that all of our guides now have more hairs applied to them, right? And this is controlled down here under the guide weights. And we have things like influence radius. So this is just how much space around a guide 
is allowed for adding hair. So if we increase this, you can see that it spreads out a lot more. This influence decay causes hairs that are added, which are further away from the guide, to not be affected by the guide as much. So if we push that up, you'll see that they no longer clump together as much. We also have this clump crossover over here. And this is really useful because it uses that clump ID that we generated. And so now we can allow certain hairs to stray into other clumps, right? So we push this up and they kind of move over into other clumps. So increase the density a bit more. And as you can see, we've now gone from having just these very basic curves over here to adding some basic frizz, brushing them in some particular way, adding clumping, and then generating more hairs on top of them. And you can always go back and make changes, for example, on this clump, perhaps I want less clumping or smaller clump clusters. And then the great thing is we can still make all sorts of changes after this hair gen. So I'm just gonna push this up even higher. And you can see that we now have about 300,000 points, but these are all just curves and I'll show you how to render them shortly. But I just want to show you that we can still use more of these operations. We can use all of the guide processes that we've used before. And this is really useful for adding a bit of variation after we've set up our final hairs. All right, so once that's set up, let's go ahead and just drop a null, grab our guides over here. And this is just going to be our hair out, right? So we have this over here. I'm also just going to grab our skin. So let's go and use a null over here. This is going to be skin out. And then if we go to the stage level over here, we can use a sop import. We're going to rename this to hair, import our hair, duplicate this, call the skin, import our skin, and then use a material library. Now, an interesting thing is that when you view it over here, it actually has thickness, right? Each of these hairs now have a width attribute, which has been applied to them, which can be seen in the viewport. And this has always existed. If we go back over here, if we take a look at our attributes over here, they all have a width. And this width can be controlled, right? We have a hair gen over here, and there is this attributes and appearance tab. So this width over here and this thickness work together to actually render our geometry. So if we go over to the stage level, this is what we have based on those settings. As you can see, they taper towards the edges. And that's just that curve that we saw on the hair gen over here. Right, if I remove this, you'll see that the end hairs are just going to be coarse and cut off. So this is a really useful way to end up with softer looking fur, because if we drop this off over a longer period, you can see that it ends up looking much softer and finer. So as we were doing before with this material library, we're going to create two materials. One is just going to be this regular Karma material builder, which we're going to call skin. Inside of here, I'm just going to make this a darker color, increase the roughness. So we're going to create another one. This is going to be a Karma material builder, just call this hair, dive inside. And we're going to drop a Karma hair node. So we're going to take this Karma hair and replace the surface over here. And then we can delete our material X standard surface. This Karma hair node is really cool because it uses a bunch of settings that are physically accurate to produce our hair shading. So I'm going to go up a level over here and just assign our two materials, auto full, assign one to skin, one to hair. And then I'm going to add a Karma physical sky increase the exposure slightly. And now let's take a look at what we have. So we'll go Karma XPU. And this will take a moment to actually build this. But once it's finished doing so, it'll be really fast to navigate around here. So just give it a moment and there you can see our hair being rendered. So let's bring our physical sky around to put light onto these hairs, something like that. I'm just gonna go back up and make some changes to my hair gen, increase the density slightly, increase the hair length a bit. And let's go back to our stage level. So that's a bit more interesting. Now let's take a look at our material library over here. This hair shader over here uses a couple of things. As you can see, it uses melanin. Melanin is just going to be how much color pigment is in the hair. So as we reduce this, we end up with hair that has no color pigment in it. And then it defaults to using the base color. As we push this up, you'll see that it gets darker. And then it also uses this melanin redness to define these red areas where the light's coming through. If we drop that, you'll see that there's less of that redness. If we push it up, there'll be more of it. We can also take this and then add a tint to it down here if we want a particular color of fur. Then we have other options like this thickness scale, which allows light to enter the hairs. So as you can see, as I drop this, the hair begins to look softer and more light. As we increase it, we end up with much thicker, coarser hair. Over here under specular, we have this shift, which is really interesting because it actually changes the way that light interacts with the hair. If we push this up, you'll see that it now hits it in a different way. And then finally, we have this diffuse tab over here, and this just makes our hair diffuse, right? So. This might be useful for something that's more like fabric. You don't have to be rendering hair with this. But as we decrease it, we'll have more of this sort of subsurf where light comes through the hair in different ways. Now, in this situation, we are rendering a close up. And the great thing about these hair tools is that these are just curves. So any sort of functionality that you would have with a regular curve, you'll have with this. So if we take a look at the points that make up this hair over here, you can see that maybe we don't have enough points. 
what we can do is use a subdivide and this works perfectly fine, right? This will actually just subdivide our curves and smooth them out. And then when we go back to the stage level, you'll end up with much smoother curves, right? So that's just one way of doing it. So just like that, we can end up with really great looking hair without too much work. All of our work is done over here, just using these few nodes. And all it generates are these curves with some attributes that can then get fed in to our renderer. I hope that this helped you understand the hair generate node and how we can use it for both guides and for generating final hairs. So thank you for watching. I'll see you tomorrow with the feather templates up and that's going to be for day 23. So I'll see you there. Bye.